Perhaps the most important outcome of the 19th session was the resolution on promoting accountability and reconciliation in Sri Lanka. And this was a long-awaited action by the Human Rights Council, and it shows, it, it shows that the international community wants to support the process of accountability in that country. Unfortunately, the discussions around the resolution were marked by a very tense climate and by a series of, of grave uh, cases of intimidation and harassment of human rights defenders wanting to engage with the Council on this situation. We hope that the resolution on Sri Lanka will now enhance the space that human rights defenders have at the national level. And despite the tensions that we've observed in, in Geneva during the, the session and the negotiation, that there will be a more constructive dialogue between the government and human rights defenders so that they can work together towards promoting full accountability and reconciliation. The renewed willingness of the Human Rights Council to, to discuss situations that are usually neglected is also shown in a joint statement signed by around 40 states expressing concern about the human rights situation in Eritrea. Finally, it renewed the country mandates on the situation in Myanmar and in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. What's remarkable about the DPRK vote is that for the first time in the Council's history, the resolution was passed by consensus. The Human Rights Council also passed resolutions on a number of countries in the Middle East. We are disappointed to see that a year into the Arab Spring, several governments, including from the Arab region, continue to attempt to uphold international impunity in the context of the Human Rights Council. So while we saw some very positive outcomes, such as the strongest resolution yet on Syria, with the strongest outcome, with, with the strongest reference yet to international accountability and the strongest vote, at the same time we saw less positive developments on other resolutions. What the resolution on Syria does is it extends the mandate of the Commission of Inquiry on Syria for another six months, which is a positive step because we, we believe that a Commission of Inquiry is a more appropriate format for continuing to monitor the, the situation in Syria than some alternatives. Unfortunately, though, there's limits to what the Commission of Inquiry can do given that they're not being granted access by the Syrian regime to, to, to the territory. In contrast to the resolution on Syria, where we saw states widely, with few exceptions, supporting a very strong resolution, we saw that when it came to the Libya resolution, states not only from the Arab region, but from around the world failed to take a strong stance and to try to to draft and pass a resolution that would actually create some kind of monitoring mechanism. One encouraging uh, development at this session of the Human Rights Council that's worth noting is that several states in their, in the, in their um, state statements, so in their individual statements, made quite strong statements about the situation in Bahrain and in Egypt. And this is, a, it was unprecedented in its level of condemnation of the violations that are ongoing in these two countries. Unfortunately, while we really welcomed these statements, there was still no collective action taken by the Human Rights Council to address these two situations. We were also encouraged at the session to see that the resolution on the Israeli settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories was passed and that it establishes an international fact-finding mission to look at the settlements and the encroachment on, on the OPTs. Um, and we wish that the support that Arab states showed to the situation in Palestine and for this resolution would have been the same for situations such as Libya where they failed to try to create the same kind of mechanisms to ensure accountability. The weaknesses of the resolution on Libya clearly show the limitations of a fairly recent approach that the Human Rights Council has taken whereby concerned states take the lead in drafting resolutions on their own human rights situation. While this is of course desirable and sometimes necessary to affect real human rights change on the ground, the Council must not the, the desire for cooperation and constructive dialogue remove the critical edge from its work. 